Hello, my name is Shelly Stanton, and I am gonna just go through a list of my favorite Google things for an hour. Um, if I don't get through the A to Z, I'll just embed little videos under the letters I don't get to. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get started here. In your handout section for MFPE, or typing in this address up here, bit dot lee slash m f p e a z you're gonna get this list right here it is full of my favorite google things a to z as well as some other options so how this works is you can see here under a i wrote add-ons maybe you know all about add-ons go ahead and fast forward me or do whatever you want to do but if you wanted to check out some other a's and look at that i've got a typo I'll have many more of those. Um, you could check out some things down here under other. This space right here is in case you want to make a copy of this file or type into your PDF notes as we go. All right, so let's get started with A. My favorite googly A thing is add-ons. And add-ons are things that are actually within each Google tool of um, sheets, slides, docs, and it's really amazing. When I press on add-ons here in my Google Docs, you can see I have all of this stuff added. These are things that make docs work better. Um, they are third-party add-ons, so they can change the way things function, and you might need to check with your domain admin but they are super, super cool things. Um, like this one right here, Hello Sign in Docs is pretty neat because it allows any Google Doc to be signed. And you can email that to parents or to teachers or whatever, and boom, you've got one of those signing systems digitally. Um, I'm trying to see my very favorite one. I think it's called Grade Proof. Where is it? Ah, here we go. So pro writing aid. So when I was renewing my national boards, this was a great one for me. And I think I even paid for it. But look at all of the checks it does in my writing. So um, a great tool to teach your kids and for you to use. To get an add-on, you would go to add-ons and get add-ons. When you do this, and again, it's in each tool. So docs, slides, whatever. It gives you all of these different things you can use. And just like with Amazon, what I would look is at is the number of users and the star rating. One of the tools where I absolutely love add-ons is in Google Sheets. Um, there's one called Awesome Table that I love in Sheets. Oh, there's so many. But just know that all of those Google tools have add-ons. If you click right here where it says click here, um, links come down below so you can click on that. It's gonna take you to what my favorite add-ons were in um, 2018. Holy smokes, that seems like forever ago, but these are still some of my favorite. Form notifications is huge. I check that one out on Google Forms. So that's a little bit about A. So I'm gonna move right on here to B. And I'm sure many of you use bookmarks. Bookmarks are these items up here on your toolbar in Chrome. If you don't see these, you may need to go to your settings in Chrome right here where these three dots are and settings. And um, make sure that your bookmark bar, oh, I did that wrong. So I'm gonna go back, bookmarks and we want to have show bookmarks bar on. There are some things here in settings. I accidentally went here, I didn't mean to, um, but I'm gonna do that. So now that I'm in settings, bookmarks, you can see you can also turn it on here, show bookmarks bar, and you can do a few other fun things. I've never played with these. These would be really cool, changing the font size. So if you've got tons, you can make it small. Ooh, customizing fonts. Wow, well that was a nice little stumble I did. So cool, change your bookmarks and settings as well. One of the things I love to do is obviously bookmark. So let's say I want to bookmark this web page here. To do that, you click, click on the star 
and then you can choose where it's going to go gonna go. You could put it right on to the bookmarks bar, meaning it's going to show up if you have room. And you can also create folders. I'm going to just put it right on my bookmarks bar to show you this. So I'm going to press done. So now you can see this is right here. One of the things I love to do is edit the bookmark. Oftentimes there's an icon for a bookmark so like for instance this right here i know this has to do with smarter balance so i just took off the words so if i control click here and press edit i can just take out the words i can delete them or rename them and save it and then all you have is that icon there in the bookmark so great time saver great for kids to know I don't want this one, so I'm gonna control click and delete it. So that's just a little bit about bookmarks. Um, great time saver, and the folders are fabulous. So like if I were to click here on Brandy and Tech, you can see those top things go right in here as well as a folder um, in a folder. Whew, Jesus. Okay, Cultural Institute. If you are a social studies or art teacher, this is just an amazing tool that I highly suggest you check out. Um, you can make, I, I'm not, I'm not even going to talk anymore because you're going to get in a rabbit hole if you like this, but Google Arts and Culture is definitely something to play with, even if you're looking for writing prompts for your kids. That app. The Google app for this is also amazing. You can even take a picture of yourself and it will show you, um, dang it, I saw a message pop up, but it will show you what art, like what piece of art you look like. I always end up as an old man. Let's see here. Whoops. And we are back. Um, so we've gotten A through Z, and now D, what I've got listed here is Google Drawings. Um, I'm guessing most of you know about Google Drawings, but there are some features in Drawings that are fabulous. First off, when you open it up, I'm not sure how your video is showing, you're going to see a gray and white background. One of the beautiful things about the gray and white background is that it creates PNGs. So if I wanted to create a logo or something um, that has a transparent background, I can go, so I inserted a camera image, which is also a very cool feature, um, file, download as, and then choose PNG. There are PNG options also in slides, but the one in drawings it's just a little bit niftier. Another great feature of Google Drawings is just the ability to hyperlink. So I could take this picture here, I can grab our link of our notes, Command C, come over and paste that in there. And so when our kids are any creating any kind of um, poster, this is an amazing digital option where they can also hyperlink to a resource or something they've created or maybe even if in the source where they they've gotten the image so drawings if you've never checked it out are definitely something to check out I am going to update this too with a few other drawings things right here it says um, you can earn your black belt in Google drawings so anytime you see this black belt throughout this document, if you press on it, it's going to take you to a challenge to walk you through what you can do in Google Drawings or another tool. So whew, hyperlink bonus there in Drawings, if what I said doesn't make sense. Okay, extensions, E. Um, this is huge. And I could talk about extensions for an hour, so I'm going to be as simple as I can. Extensions are things that are added up here in your Chrome browser. There's a really good chance if you look, you've got things either you've added or your district has added that you didn't even know about.
but they make Chrome run different. If you click here, you're gonna see, again, click here, some of my favorites from a few years ago. I would say these maybe have changed during remote times, but these are great ones to consider. To get an extension, there's all sorts of ways. You can go to Chrome, well, this beautiful thing right here, colon slash slash extensions. But what I actually like to do in a tab is just search for whatever um, extension I'm looking for. One that I absolutely love is Grammarly. I don't know if it's okay for kids or not, but for me, it's huge. And then this first link here, anything that says Google Chrome usually will take you to the Chrome store. So I'm gonna click on that. And then here we go. I did end up right in the extension section. So it's the Chrome Web Store is where we're getting these. And mine says remove from Chrome because I already have this. But if you don't have it installed, then you can install it right here with this button. One thing about extensions that often happens is you don't see all of them up here. Um, this right here puzzle piece will show you any that aren't fitting on your toolbar. And bonus extension, what we're I'm recording this in right now is actually called the Screencastify extension. So you can see it's recording right here. It's not anything high tech. It's just a really simple, quick way to make screencasts. Um, and it's really affordable if you need to upgrade. So extensions, gotta love those. All right, we're doing, oh, well, hello, didn't mean to do that. We're gonna go back a screen. So we're gonna move on here, A, B, C, D, E. Look at that F, oh, ho, ho, ho. I love F. So <laughs> one of my favorite things is when teachers share, create, um, items for our teachers to use, for you and I to use. And Flippity is just that. This was created by a teacher in Texas named Steve Fortna. And what he has done is, is created all of these Google Sheets with App Script for you to have interactive things with your kiddos. So Flippity.net, right up here. And you can see these are all things you can create inside of Google Sheets or your kids can create inside of Google Sheets to make um, just a dynamic classroom. One that a lot of people like is the random name picker. So I'm gonna press on demo. Typically you would press on template to get started, but I'm gonna press on demo just to show you how this works. So if I go like this, isn't this cool? it's going to randomly pick that kiddo's name. I can do single name, I can put kids in groups, seating charts, I can even do quick edits. So maybe I want to enter, take out a couple of kids. Oh my gosh, this is new, I hadn't even seen this before. So now those kids aren't in the spinner. What, that's brand new, that was under more, wow. Okay, very cool, so I'm gonna go back a screen. I'm talking very fast, I know, because I only have an hour, but you can pause. Check it out, flippity.net. Um, real quick, I want to show you how easy it is to make this random name picker or anything in this flippity. So I'm going to go to template. He is smart enough to know we have to force a copy, so he's forced this copy for us. When we make a copy of this, it automatically goes in our Google Drive. So right away, I could put in um, I'm going to put in remote teacher picker and I could paste any names here that I, I have or I could type them in. And now let's see if I can zoom up. Um, oh shoot, I'm going to hide my options. Down here on the bottom, see there's these two tabs and sheets. We want to press get the link here. And he has done a wonderful job in reminding us we have to publish this. And this will be the same for any tools that Steve Fortna shares. So we're gonna go File, Publish to the Web. And we want to publish this link. So link, Publish. And now, this is amazing. Okay, so remember, he forced made a copy. I'm gonna pretend these are my kids' names. I went to Get Link. I had to go file, publish to the web. 
Now when I press on this, boom, there's my random name picker. That was a lot, I know. So if everything I said didn't make sense, what I would do is go to flippity.net and explore. These are all things you or your students can create in Google Sheets. So for instance, this quiz show here, you can give that to kids and have them collaboratively make a review for um, an upcoming unit or something of that sort. So flippity.net right here, amazing. Um, thank you, Steve Fortna, for sharing that. So under G, well, Google, obviously, there's so many things. Oh, I'm gonna add to this too, the, the new Google Skill Shop. So if my speed of sharing and my excitement is too much, which it is for a lot of people, you can go to Google Skill Shop and it has beautiful modules that will walk you through how to do things. Um, but for G, I have chosen graded quizzes. So I'm gonna bring over a Google form here. And so far, no big deal. There's a lot of ways to make graded, um, graded quizzes. One of them actually, which is so cool, is inside of Google Classroom. When you create a quiz in Google Classroom, it's all, it's automatically gonna set it up so it's graded. So I'm gonna go to a classroom just to show you. Classwork create. If in classroom you choose quiz assignment, it's the exact same thing as what I'm going to show you in forms. So in Google Classroom, if you choose quiz assignment, it can automatically grade these forms for you to save some time. In our forms though, so I'm just in a regular blank form. I didn't choose um, the quiz form. Maybe I should back up. I'm going to back up and show you how I got there. So I always like to go to Google, whatever the name is of the tool, .google.com. So forms.google.com, slides.google.com. So here we go, forms.google.com. And again, remember, stop, pause whenever you need to. Here, you can choose all sorts of things. So you can choose a blank quiz, and that will be graded, or you can just choose blank. I'm a little classic in the Google form, so I'm gonna choose blank. So I have to manually turn on for this to be a graded quiz. So to do that, I'm gonna go up here to settings. And if you've never played in settings in any Google tool, that also is a great bonus. Always press the settings and see what you can do. Settings, and now here in quizzes, I have to turn on make this a quiz. This allows me to put in the correct answer and give feedback. When we go down under here under quizzes, you're gonna see some other really cool options like this one, locked mode on Chromebooks. If your students are using a district Chromebook and they're signed in um, and your domain administrators turn this on, then kids can't go anywhere else during their quiz time, which is a great feature depending on what you're asking. I would hope that you would ask things that um, wouldn't be able to be looked up on the internet, but sometimes we need to do that too. And then as we go down, you have some options. Do you want them to get their score right away or do you want it later? And that can vary. Um, maybe you have some short answer things you want to correct. Maybe you just don't want the kids to know because you're gonna use the same quiz all day long. So just think about what you want. And then here's some more things. Do you want them to see missed questions, the correct answers and point values? Again, depending on um, just your philosophy or that particular assignment. So I have this turned on, so I'm gonna press save. And now the really cool thing that you're gonna see is right here it says answer key. So I can ask my question. And isn't that a beautiful question right there? And I'm, I want it to be multiple choice or checkbox if I want it to autocorrect easily. You can still ask those other things, but the autocorrection is a little harder. So multiple choice. And then I obviously am going to put a well-written answers there, A, B, C, and D with nothing else. 
but I need to mark what's correct. So if I press answer key, now it lets me mark whichever one is correct. I can also change the points here depending on that question. What? Right? And so then kids, well, first it's going to auto grade for you, but kids can get immediate feedback if they were right or wrong. But this is where it becomes really, really cool. So right here, I've marked what's correct. I can put answer feedback. So in answer feedback, I can put things for incorrect answers. So something along, please check out and maybe you want them to read something. Maybe you want them to go to a specific link in, in your Google Classroom where you've posted the materials. Maybe you want to add a reteach video. And you can also put feedback for the correct answer. Maybe it's an extension. Maybe it's just thank you. Maybe it's, um, OK, now try this harder thing. So you can put all of that in to the Google Form. So not only do they know if they're right or wrong, and your scores are done, but they can also get some quick feedback. Holy smoly, right? Holy smoly. Um, I think that graded quizzes and forms is really a game changer. And really, any grade three up, it's going to help you with assessment as well as help them because they're getting automatic feedback. Oh, okay, H. And we're doing okay for time. I'm all right for time. Um, right here, H is headings and docs. This is so simple, but like right over here, do you see how I've got it sort of lined out? That's because for each of these letters, I made it a heading. So I'm not sure which update heading two to match. Now, yeah, see that? Oh, okay, so I must be heading one. So you can see that each of these items are headings. So when you press on this cool little show document outline in Docs, you've got this fabulous drop down menu here. This is super important if you're giving kids digital documents and when they're writing for you. So maybe your kids are turning in a really long writing assignment and you want to check certain sections. If they put in headings correctly, just like we used to in Microsoft back in the day, it's going to make your assessment much, much faster. So check that out. Oh, image drag. This is pretty silly. So image drag, one of the things people may or may not know is you can, oh, that's not an image, but you can just take images, let's see, and just drag them right into any Google Doc. So this can be an image right on your desktop. This can be um, an image anywhere. So just know you can drag and drop. And really, dragging and dropping also works in Drive. So if you've got anything on your desktop, a Word document, a movie, um, a image file, you can actually just drag those, and boom, it works. Jamboard. Woo! So Jamboard is one I'm still exploring, but um, oh, I don't have that link to what I want it to link to. But it is basically a whiteboard. Um, so again, look at that, jamboard.google.com. So you can see here, these are called my recent jams. And there's all sorts of different things you can do inside of a Jamboard. What you're going to see when you first look at this one is what looks like post-it notes because um, people can collaborate with you and add notes. It also has this really cool like slide feature that you can play in, and these are all the different things you can do. So if you are, oh, I maybe don't have editing rights anymore. Oh, I do. If you are teaching remotely, this is a great option for you and your kids to have some digital whiteboards that you can work on together or individually. I still have a lot to learn about Jamboard, but it's one that I think has tons of potential and I'm excited to explore it more. Keep, K, keep, 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 um, keep, look at me, keep.google.com. Google Keep is, first off, amazing as an app, 
because you can take pictures, you can audio record, you can share files, you can take make checklists, and it syncs with your computer. So this is kind of a silly example, but the one I use all the time. So on a grocery list, I can actually press these three dots and use show checkbox, and I can make my grocery list. Um, here we go. And what else do I get at the store that's appropriate for recording? Mm, chocolate. Okay, now, cool, I made a list, no big deal. One of the cool things though about this checkboxes is if I check it off, it just goes down here to the bottom and I can uncheck it and put it back. So that alone is pretty cool. And it syncs with my phone. So I'm actually at the grocery store on the playground doing a walkthrough, um, doing some sort of assessment of kids where there's a checklist I need to do. It's gonna sync right on my mobile device. Another thing that's nifty is you can have collaborators. So if this is a checklist you need to do together, so my husband could go grocery shopping. We would have a collaborative one that we're working on together. Super nifty. Um, the other kind of cool thing, well, it's not even cool, it's really cool. Let's see. So this drawing feature, which is also a mobile option. So if I press on this, I am again gonna get a whiteboard. So I can use the mobile device as a whiteboard system for my kids. I can also then share this. Um, I can export those as drawings. I can, I just, like it's unbelievable. I can add graphing paper in the back. I am not very skilled at drawing straight lines, but if you are, this is an option. So that drawing whiteboard feature is pretty darn cool. I can also just take pictures on my phone or right here, I can add a note with an image. Just tons and tons of options. There is also an audio recording option here that will turn it to text. So great thing to check out, Google Keep. Oh, link, ha ha ha, that's kind of cheesy. So just a hyperlink is, and I was gonna change that Jamboard one, so I'm gonna go ahead, jamboard.google.com, grab that link. I'm gonna go up here, and my Jamboard one was wrong, so I'm gonna remove this link, and I'm just gonna highlight it, whoops, highlight it, link option, and paste. So, um, super simple, but if you aren't using hyperlinks, I would give it a shot. One for your kids that are a little older so they can either get help or extensions with anything that you write. Another reason is it just makes things look nicer if you put in a hyperlink to text, like in your email versus that really, really big long Google link. Um, and for me, I love it in my own work so that I remember where things are. So I would check that out. Still doing pretty good on time, so I'm gonna keep going. M. My Maps. Okay, I think it's mymaps.google.com. We're gonna try that. If not, we'll do something else. This tool is actually kind of secret in your Google, but it's really, really powerful. So you can see right here that I have, I'm in Google My Maps. Let's see what happens if I press on those. I can create a new map. I can also store things in my drive. One of the things that's cool is when you create a map, you can create a dynamic presentation for your kids that includes kind of this global geographic awareness of where things are happening. And all you have to do is press the little tog, like right here, that's not Billings, Montana, but we'll pretend I put that the right coordinates. I can explain a bit about it and I can add any of these items here. So it could be a, an article that I've written about Billings. It could be some research that I want my kids to read about Billings. I can add images. I can add YouTube links. And kids, in essence, can go on a virtual field trip to learn whatever you have to share with them. The more powerful thing, though, is our kids 
have the ability to create these maps. So as they're doing research projects, book reports, um, even math in the real world, they could place these things on a Google map to connect the dots. We always talk about con connection and relevancy. So by using a tool like this for them to share is really powerful. I'm gonna click on all just to show you some of the other examples that people have shared with me. So you can see, let's see what looks really cool. Yeah, shape activity. So if you're doing geometry, most of these tilt collaborative ones were a get to know you activity where each member in our adult learning group pinned 10 places on the map because these can be collaborative to learn a little bit more about each other. Um, oh, African drums, this was a really cool one too. This is an elementary music teacher and she put in all these sound files of African drums and where the music came from, so very cool. I thought there was, um, oh, just so many cool things, so many, so many. Fever of 1793, maybe we need another fever of 2020. Um, Esperanza Rising, this is a really cool example. What this one is, is basically a book report of Esperanza um, throughout her story in her book. So that's a great book that I know a lot of intermediate kids read and kids could use this as a reference or they could make their own. So you can see some of the things they put here. It's just a little bit about Esperanza. So at the beginning, she's a rich girl. I'm not sure why this is in the ocean. That would definitely be a question for the child who made this. Um, but some pretty cool things you can do in my maps. Bonus, personal, you can create a map and it actually links to your maps on your phone and then you know where to go. So pretty cool. For N, I've written Google News. I need to sneeze, so I'm gonna pause this. Okay, sneeze is done. Um, so again, news.google.com. I haven't used this as much lately just because the news is so depressing, but what you can do is basically customize your news. Um, this is good and bad because we know we don't only want what we want to hear, but yeah, there you have it. So you can actually, for you, saved searches, you can look at different things that are happening and you can actually create a new site that then you can share with kiddos. So I would definitely like under saved searches. Look at all my saved searches. Zero, I wanna know nothing right now. So news is very cool, especially if you're trying to accumulate some resources for kids. You could create a search and just share that search with them. Omnibox, anyone who's ever hung out with me knows I love the Omnibox. So the Omnibox is actually this thing up here. So your URL address in Chrome. Omni means everything. So. This URL address does everything. Um, you can define things. So like if I type in define geek, it defines it. It also, as you go down, gives you the translation, the use over time. You can change it to be some other language. Oh, Turk, I guess, in that language is how we say geek. So all I did up here was put define and then what it was. Omnibox is a calculator, so I could um, put in any pretty much equation, and it tells me the, the steps I need to take as well as the answer. I'm not great at graphing, but it can graph as well. So those TI-81, 82s, or whatever those extensive calculators were way back in the 90s, you can actually just put that in the Omnibox, it, and it will do that for you. It actually is a translator as well. Like if I just put say rock star in German, it will actually show me, okay, so in English, this is how you say it. In German, it can't be the same. Rock star. Oh, it just sounds different. Okay, wait, maybe we need to do um, translate rock. Oh, that's not the Omnibox, I'm gonna do that. Trans, 
which is really closer to the same now. Google's gotten pretty sophisticated and the search is close. Translate rock star to German. Okay, I thought it was ping tar. Nope, dang it, bad example. But the other cool thing you can see here is the um, rock star, how you can hear it. So then as words are really tough to pronounce, you can, you can actually learn how to pronounce them. One bummer though is in your head, you think things are one way and then darn it, they aren't. So Omnibox is cool. Oh, teaching tip, people love, um, you can put in like 10 second timer and the timer just automatically starts. So this is how, if you've ever been in a training with me, I usually use timers. Another cool thing, let's say you have some sort of a activity, I don't know if it'll do, two dice. Is that die or dice? No. Nope. So roll a die. Hmm. Um, so rolling a die, maybe you need some sort of a die for some small math activity. You can actually just put in roll a die and it gives you to you. You can add dice. See how I'm adding them there? And roll. So really cool options in the Omni box. This half triangle is semi new, so I'm gonna press it. I'm, oh, look at that. Okay, so this is what's called, uh, oh gosh, what are they called? Maybe, oh, an Easter egg. They're called the Easter eggs. This is where Google has hidden, or coders have hidden little special things for you. So look at all of these cool things they've hidden for us. I can flip a coin. You say it, heads or tails? Ah, oh, it was tails, did you get it? Okay, I'm gonna go down. Look at all these cool things. Okay, that's a fun Easter egg. Super cool. Whew, see, rabbit hole. But Omnibox is just really, really cool. Oh, I'm gonna mention this one too, online voice recorder. So now that we are in sort of this remote world, this is sort of a Google tool. But online voice recorder, I actually have it bookmarked right here, and you can see I've edited the name. What this site is, is a place to record audio files. All you have to do is click on the audio file, allow your microphone, and right now it's recording my voice. This seems kind of minor. When you save this, it's gonna save to your computer. And where Google comes in, is if you drag this file to your Google Drive, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, I have created a folder that says audio files, so I can do just this thing. Um, if you create those, yep, right here, audio files, and you can see one of the things I've done with audio files is shared it and immediately made it public. So right here, so you've got these options and I made it public. And the reason is then if I share this audio file, like in slides, because you can put audio in slides now, or um, in an email or seesaw or something that I want them to hear my voice in, then it's gonna be public. So this online voice recorder, not necessarily a Google tool. Well, I have it bookmarked, you put it in Drive, so I guess it is a great free resource to do audio recordings. Oh yeah, photos. Um, how am I gonna get there? You know, photos.google.com. So photos, if you have not used Google Photos, it's amazing. It does sync with your phone. Oh, look at all our TLI peeps there. Um, and you can create videos. You can upload photos. It's a free storage system. If you wanted to use this with your school account, then um, the great thing is those photos aren't stored on your phone. They're gonna be stored in your Google Photos cloud. You can also then import them. So here, if I wanna insert an image, insert image, I can actually grab those from Google Photos without having to worry about how to get those photos to wherever to get them in there. Um, on the app, you can create photo collages and movies. You can do all sorts of things. So I have a personal photos account and I have a district photos account. It's one of, it's just a really neat tool 
that if you're into taking pictures either of your classroom or personally, you should check out. Quick Draw. Oh, I haven't looked at this one in forever. So Quick Draw is a couple of years old. What it allows you to do, well, I should probably just show you, is when you do Let's Draw, it takes, oh no, it wants me to draw a squirrel. Um, I'm supposed to try and draw this squirrel. I see circle, or shoe, or dumbbell, or mouse, <laughs> or crab. Um, I think I need feet, maybe? I see duck, or swan, or bee, or shrimp. I, and I? I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> okay, so I'm really bad at this, obviously. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. <laughs> but it's just kind of a fun game, and you can introduce um, artificial intelligence to your kids. It also has an app, I thought, where you could draw and it would turn it into clip art, but I might be confusing it. So pretty cool option. Quiz informed, yep, that's cool too. R, replace and find. So Command F first off. So I'm gonna press Command F because I'm on a Mac. You could do Control F if you're on a PC or Chromebook. If I do this and I search for a word, it shows me all of them, which is really cool to quickly get through documents. What's even cooler though, so, oops, I'm gonna, I did that pretty fast. So, Command or Control F, the word add, and then these three dots. There's other ways to do this, but I'm gonna press right here, the three dots, and I can replace all of those with the correct thing. So one thing I'm notorious for is spelling names wrong. I have a friend named Callie and I always add the E. So I could find the one misspelling and then replace it all throughout the whole document. So super helpful. So I think that was called replace. Oh my gosh, we might actually get through. Side panel. So what the side panel is, are is over here in your Google tools, and I gotta go fast, I'm almost running out of time. Um, you can quickly access all sorts of things. One of them being that Google Keep. So if you're taking any sort of notes in Google Keep, it can show up right over here. And check this out, I can actually, I thought, yep, add it to my document. What? Isn't that cool? Um, you can also over here on the side, and this, I'm not, we actually don't want that. So I'm going to use a shortcut key, Command Z, to undo that. So over here, you can quickly access all sorts of things. Where I tend to use this the most is in my Gmail. So this side panel is super powerful. I can check that out. All right, where are we? We're getting there. We're getting there. S, R, what do you think? Oh, I did R. R, S. Oh, translate, yes, yes, yes. So I kind of showed you um, the translate if you just type it in. This is gonna take you to some support information, but also under tools, you can translate whole documents. So if you have a large ESL population, um, this is a great option. It's not perfect, but it, it's definitely helpful. The other thing is the Google app allows you to take pictures in Translate or talk into it and it will translate it and speak it in the other language. So the Translate features are super powerful in Google if you haven't checked those out. Whew, um, love that one. I haven't been able to tra travel because of COVID, but that's also useful then. Users, oh, this, um, is big, it's big, it's important, it maybe isn't very fun. So up here in Chrome, you're gonna see like two little profiles. The biggest mistake I see people do is they switch Google accounts with this lower person down here. You don't wanna do that. You want to switch up here inside of Chrome. So if I click up here, on my top face, I guess, you're gonna see that there's what's called other people. These aren't people, these are other Chrome or Google accounts. You want to add other accounts here and always switch here. 
I could talk for hours about this, but trust me, you want to, because if you don't, eventually your Google account gets all flustered. Um, yeah, trust me. So you always want to use this top user and press add and basically create another profile for any other Google accounts you want to use, whether that's yours, personal one, your kiddos, your husband's, whatever. Version history. This is so cool. So in all Google tools, if you even in Google Sites now, if you go file, version history, and see version history. So I'm going to click on this so you can see. You're going to see all of the changes that have ever happened in this document. This is super powerful if your kids are doing collab collaborative work. So you can actually see who's doing the different con contributing. Um, it's also great because you can restore versions. So like if I go to September 5th and press on these three dots, I can name a version or make a copy of that previous version. Oh yeah, I see you thinking about that. The other thing you can do on these three dots is name versions. So in writing, one of the bummers about Google Docs used to be that you can't keep tr track of your drafts. Well, now you can in version history. Um, it's, it's, also, it's just so powerful. Even to look at how much time a kiddo had spent on something, maybe the product they turn in is horrible, but they spent tons of time, that's gonna help you funnel how to teach to that kiddo. Workspaces and Drive. Okay, I'm using these a little bit. Um, let's see. So these down here are called workspaces. So I'm in my Google Drive and I press on priority, and then you can create workspaces. Workspaces are where you can put your most important things so you can easily find them. Um, I'm pretty old school with my drive, but I'm thinking if I could take the time to do this, it would be very helpful. So if you're struggling with drive, if it's just overwhelming and you can't find anything, or you've got a project you're really working on, I would check out workspaces. The rest of these, I'm gonna just let you explore on your own, but I sure hope that you enjoyed this A to Z, and I hope to see you live and in person soon, because obviously I have lots I want to share with the great teachers of Montana. Enjoy the rest of your conference.